Hello everybody, this is Terry with your Pisces Super Blue Moon Astrology Report and holy smokes do we have a moon coming in this August 30th that is so powerful. We're already soaking it. We're already feeling it. I am definitely feeling it. How about you? <laughs> And in case you didn't know, a blue moon does not mean that the super moon is going to be the color blue. A blue moon just means any month that we have two full moons in a row. And this is where we get the saying once in a blue moon because it doesn't happen that often. And a super moon is a, what we call in astrology, astronomy, peregrine sezigi. Sazigi. I might have to spell that out for you. S Y Z Y G Y Sazigi. And it means basically that the moon is at a 90% perigree to the earth, just as close as it could be to the earth. So this super moon in Pisces will appear bigger and closer, and we will be feeling it more intensely. The energy of this supermoon is going to be so powerful. And this, we've had four supermoons in a row now. We had Capricorn supermoon and Aquarius supermoon and Pisces supermoon. And then the very next and last one will be Aries supermoon, which will be the harvest moon. But this supermoon is the biggest of all of them so far. I haven't done the calculations on the Aries supermoon, so that one could be big too, but this one is a little more super than the last two supermoons. And get your rest before this comes on August 30th because we will all be having that super blue moon insomnia, I'm sure. And maybe you want to get yourself an herbal sleep aid or take your kava kava so that you can get the deep sleep and have the dreams and the visions because Pisces is all about dreams and visions and intuition. So we will really be getting some higher spiritual visions coming in with this one. You won't want to miss it from just having insomnia. And this super moon has such an incredible aspect. If you saw the astrology chart in the beginning, I might just put the astrology chart in here a whole bunch because I really want to teach you guys about what is going on. This is what I get asked all the time from friends and family and people, clients who know I do astrology. They go, what is going on? And this is a definite what is going on kind of super moon because we have this kite transit with a grand trine that is really bringing in the hands of fate and destiny and new awakenings. We are all awakening to our own personal power as we are rebirthing a new earth forward. And this could easily be a four hour astrology reading, but I want to really distill it down into a quick and easy to take elixir because <laughs> I don't wanna overwhelm any of you who are new to astrology. And I am definitely feeling this super moon in my own chart because I have a Pisces moon myself at nine degrees and my son has his north node exact to this super blue moon at seven degrees of Pisces. So it will be really interesting as the super blue moon conjuncts his north node, his big purpose and reason d'etre. We will see what happens, but I would say the main thing to know about this Pisces super blue moon is where in your chart is seven degrees of Pisces. So if you have an astrology chart, if you've had an astrology reading, if I've read your astrology chart before, leave a comment down below and I will tell you where seven degrees of Pisces is. But you can easily look at your chart Look for the house of Pisces. I'll show you how to do this. I'll probably put a chart in here and circle Pisces, the house, and look for where that seven degrees is. And that is where you will be feeling all the feels on this super blue moon. And if you haven't had your chart read and you want an astrology reading, I do astrology readings. I'll put my link down below. You can get a really simple astrology reading just to have your chart 
for it's very affordable and I'll put my website down in the description and when I think of this powerful super blue moon in Pisces I cannot help but think of a tsunami with the way the aspects are going. When I, um, whenever there's a Pisces moon, full moon, I love to get to the beach, to the ocean. I live in Oregon, so I love to go to the Oregon coast for Pisces full moon. But this year, I feel like I just wanna be in my own home, in my own safe harbor for this one because it's gonna be so intense. And tsunami, is a Japanese word that literally means su, safe harbor, combined with nami, wave. So get to a safe harbor because we are about to have a devastatingly powerful wave come crashing ashore. And a tsunami is one of the most powerful, destructive natural forces that comes in this series of ginormous waves expanding outwards in all directions. And it's generally caused by a sudden disruption in the ocean underground, such as an earthquake, geopathic distress, or even one of those giant underwater volcanoes that we've been having more and more of. And tsunamis radiate outward in all directions. And it's mostly going on under the sea, deep within, just like Pisces ruling over the 12th house, ruling over our subconscious mind. There's a lot that goes on underground, under our knowing. They say that 90% of our behavior is ruled by our subconscious mind, but that's the mind that we don't always even know what's going on, right? It's hidden under surface. And that's what the tsunami is like. It's all this activity that's going on under the sea. You could be out on a fishing boat and it looks as if the ocean is calm as ever, but there could be a tsunami brewing underneath and you're just not aware of what is about to happen. And I just think the tsunami, I was just went on to this whole deep dive of like, the feeling of a tsunami. That is what this super blue moon feels like for me. And it just reminds me of so many of us right now who may have waves of turbulence going on under the waters, going on deep within, maybe deep in the subconscious mind. There's anxiety, tension, stress, and there may be that underground turbulence even as we may have an outer appearance of everything is fine. How many times have you known somebody who you thought everything was fine and then you learn that they were going through insane inner turmoil? Maybe um, I, I kind of feel this sense of suicide with this Pisces super blue moon, that kind of energy of somebody who holds it all in and doesn't let people know what's really going on until it's too late. And I studied psychology in college and I used to do counseling for teenagers with suicidal tendencies and it is so tragic when somebody unexpectedly takes their life and you're not just not ready for it. So I will say just to anyone out there who's struggling, it gets better and get the help you need. Don't have a tsunami underground. Let your emotions out this super blue moon. Even if it's just journal writing or going into therapy or talking to a friend, don't try to bottle it in because when you bottle it in, it just explodes into an even more destructive tsunami. And we may be trying right now to ignore the Earth's issues and it's not working in our favor as we can see with everything that just happened in Maui and all the wildfires and earthquakes and hurricanes. Eventually, we are not going to be able to ignore the deep earth issues that may have been happening underground, but now it's like it's rising up into full-blown tsunami and it's right in our face and we need to do something about our earth 
crisis, and that is Uranus in Taurus, which is coming in so strong as Uranus is about to retrograde on this super blue moon. I'm going to talk more about Uranus, and I'm going to talk more about that kite configuration and all that means as we go along, just taking it one step at a time. But we are all going to be feeling this tsunami of all the feelings, Pisces rules over our emotions. And this super blue moon um, is really asking us to express our emotions and let it come to the surface because Pisces rules over the 12th house. And this is the house of the subconscious and all things that are hidden under the surface the deep secrets that can come to the surface now. And this 12th house can also rule over insane asylums and hospitals. So we may have a lot of people, I would not want to work in an emergency room on this super blue moon. And I feel for all the nurses and doctors who do this work because it is going to be crazy. And our own inner journey that we don't share with anyone else. That is also ruled by the 12th house, right? The things that we keep secret, we don't even tell our friends and family, our deep inner feelings, our most inner self. This super moon might just bring out some real vulnerable posts on Instagram where people are pulling out their deepest inner feelings and they're just sharing them, just like a tsunami pulling the waves from deep within and expressing it out in this big sloppy way that can be very destructive just like a tsunami is and we just might be feeling these massive waves of emotion that can feel like it can drown us and destroy us as it spreads out in all directions when it finally is released and so the 12th house also rules over hospice, death, and our self undoing, meaning anything we do to undermine ourselves or to self sabotage. There's a lot of energy of self destruction here. I think that's why I was saying I really feel that this could be like a suicidal super blue moon, which is scary. And I just hope that you will all get the help you need if you're even thinking about that because it gets better if you get the help you need. Don't do anything to sabotage yourself this super moon. Just stay home, stay in your safe harbor, and just really try to be safe on the super moon because it's also paired with that Chiron in Aries retrograde, the wounded warrior healer. And we might see a lot of healing crisis happening on this super blue moon and lots of people just acting out in crazy ways, insane asylum, 12th house, and just try to keep compassion. Sometimes when I'm out in the world and I see things that are disturbing or just people behaving badly, I think of compassion as my shield. And just like the Nordics have the shield, the big wooden shield, it's like, let compassion be your shield and just try to have compassion, but step away from the crazy. Don't engage. This is one of those super moons I say, don't engage with crazy. And um, because there's some people that just won't be able to handle the intensity of the energy coming in with this super moon. And so I just want to kind of hide out on this kind of super moon. I'll probably just take some strong kava kava tincture potion and see what my visions, what my dreams are telling me because this is a really good time to tap in to your subconscious, do the hypnosis, do the therapy, do the deep dive within and see what your dreams and visions want to tell you. And I just remembered I meant to start this whole thing out with the full moon, super moon, astrology chart giveaway. And as I always say, if you like, subscribe, and comment, you will be in it to win it for an astrology reading. And I got so many comments this time. I have so many little strips of paper in here. Somebody lucky is going to win a free astrology chart reading. And I am even accepting comments on my little shorts because I always pull shorts out of these videos. So somebody will win. And I'm going to close my eyes and just pick somebody. And it is 
SN8323. You just won an astrology chart reading. I meant to do this at the beginning and then I just got all wrapped up in the tsunami. <laughs> but SN8323. Oh, my, my mother's birthday is a 20, on the 23rd and she is a Pisces. So that feels very fitting to have that number 23 being the winner of a free astrology chart. My website, Kanini Healing Arts, is down below. Just reach out to me through that website. You can contact me and I will get started. Give me your birth date and time and location. I'll get started on your free astrology chart reading. Um, but anyways, full moons are always about releasing something, whatever is holding you back, releasing whatever is not serving you. And I'm going to do a little energy clearing at the end of this for releasing whatever is not serving you and just really clearing out your old energy. We all absorb energy. Even going to the grocery store, you can absorb toxic energy. So this super moon is such a powerful time for energy clearing. And I want to infuse this super moon reading with a lot of healing. I'm going to do distance healing Reiki for all of you who are watching. I'm going to put some distance Reiki symbols, maybe some binaural music and a lot of energy clearing into this recording. And you have to let me know down in the comments if you can feel it, because this is something I want to start incorporating into my astrology readings. I am a Reiki master teacher. I give Reiki sessions, I do distance Reiki and energy clearings, and I just think we're all going to need a little more healing this month, and maybe I'll even do a little singing bowl in this recording as well, because we are definitely releasing what is not serving us, but for some people, they are just going to be have everything stripped away from them under this intensity of an energy. And we are seeing that in our world with the hurricanes and the wildfires. And it's just amazing to me that just in one moment, your whole life could be stripped away from you. You could lose your house and your family and your, everything that means anything to you. And um, whew, we're definitely seeing this energy of big release, big release of everything right now. And, Uranus stations retrograde on August 28th, joining the other seven planets that are retrograde night now. And Uranus at 23 degrees of Taurus is all about unexpected, sudden Earth occurrences that we are really seeing in our world right now. And Uranus is so close to that Jupiter at 15 degrees of Taurus. It's not a complete conjunction per se. They're not an exact conjunction, but they're close enough to be affecting each other. And Jupiter expands Uranus and Uranus creates these revelations, breakthroughs, but also sudden unexpected Earth events. And then Jupiter is just expanding that. And we are really seeing that now. It's not just a hurricane. It is a major tidal wave flooding. And it's not just a fire, it is a devastating wildfire in Maui that I am so still heartbroken about. And if, like I said last time, if you want to donate, I have a really good cause. These people in Maui who've been around forever, it's a community and they will get the funds to the right people. I'm going to link it down again because they could just still need all the help they can get. And Uranus creating these unexpected earth events relating to our resources in Taurus, our money. Where is Taurus in your chart and what unexpected events, what upheaval, but also what breakthrough. Sometimes we have upheaval that leads to breakthrough. And it could be just a little bit of both, upheaval and breakthrough expanded by Jupiter is all going down at 23 degrees of Uranus, this super blue moon. So I just wanted to read the Sabian symbol for 23 degrees of Taurus because it's so powerful. Whenever a planet stations retrograde, it becomes more potent, more intense, and we're already feeling Uranus and we're not even there yet. Just wait until the date of August 28th when Uranus actually stations retrograde. That's when things could really go down. And Taurus at 23 degrees 
is a jewelry shop filled with valuable gems. And the keynote is social confirmation of natural excellence. And gems result from natural processes induced by extreme volcanic heat and pressure and geopathic stress, earth stress. And the gem becomes a finished product by a refined craftsman. Both the gems themselves and the artistry are highly prized and bring prestige to any owner of such jewels. This symbol applies to any product of culturally acquired skill, embellishing or transforming the end result of a lengthy and demanding natural process. This is a certification of personal worth. And that natural process that makes gems reminds me of an astrological square. If you've been watching me for a while, you know I always say that squares are about that diamond making pressure. It's the pressure, the conflict, the obstacles, the struggle that turns us into diamonds so we can shine. I don't love squares, but you know they always contain a gift in the end when you've gone through all the pressure and the struggle <laughs> and the obstacles, you find the jewel, the gift within a square. And this month on August 22nd, we have a diamond making square between Venus and Jupiter. As Venus in Leo prepares to go direct on September 3rd, she's been traveling all around. If you haven't already watched my Venus retrograde video that shows the full star pattern of Venus that we have been experiencing all summer long and it's really been affecting our love and money and our relationships and it's about to come to an end and Venus will go direct on September 3rd, but before that she squares Jupiter on August 22nd. And of all the squares you could have, this one is the least of our worries because Venus just wants love and money and things of beauty like gems. And she aligns really well with Jupiter, the king who grants wishes. And probably our bigger, biggest worry with this square, Venus, love and money and everything she wants, and Jupiter, the king, who has all the things to gift, this could bring about overspending. I deserve it. I deserve to spend money on jewels and gems, and I deserve to buy a new car, and I deserve, I deserve, I deserve, I, I'm worth it. And... So we really can have overspending. People are gonna be going into debt over this square. And I just saw a whole story about the brand new Tiffany's in New York. They just totally remodeled it in New York City. And who wouldn't love to be rich enough to shop for some precious gems at Tiffany's? And we are living in such a time right now of haves and have nots. There's so many people who are out there in the world and they're just homeless and they have nothing. And then there's people who are just going to Tiffany's and blowing millions of dollars on a single gem. So this Venus, Jupiter, money and love square brings a tendency towards greed, financial excess, and extravagance. But it can cause problems for gluttony, overeating, overspending, drinking, and drug abuse. As Oscar Wilde once said, moderation in all things, including moderation. <laughs> And I think our moderation for moderation is going to go out the window because people are going to go really crazy. They're going to be overspending, over drinking. Just take it easy, <laughs> this super moon. And Venus is crossing over those Leo points. For me, I am a Leo rising at 20 degrees and Venus has crossed over three times and she'll cross over one more time as she stations direct. So, um... Three times Venus is crossing that same Leo point. Wherever Leo is in your astrology chart, find the house of Leo. You will be feeling some things happening as Venus crosses over three times. I think of the Commodore song. She's once, twice, 
three times a lady. <laughs> really aging myself. I think Lionel Richie wrote that. But he wrote it in honor of his wife. And that is a very Venus, divine, feminine, empowered song. And just know your Leo because a lot is going to be activated triggered, glimmered and shimmered though too. This can be good. Venus crossing over the same point several times can be good good news. And I just read an article about um about being glimmered is the opposite of being triggered. We all know what triggered is. It's like when somebody really triggers your old wounds, your old childhood trauma and it really sends you in an emotional tailspin. We'll have a lot of people being triggered by this super blue moon. But you can also be glimmered and shimmered and that is in your house of Leo when Venus crosses over. Um, do you like glimmer or shimmer better? Because I read the article said glimmer but I think I like shimmer better because shimmer is about the light shining, right? The light that shines within us then we shimmer and glimmers or shimmers are when something lights you up in a good way, right? Those micro moments in life of pure joy, love, appreciation, and happiness when you can shine with the joy within. And I just recently went to Crater Lake and I felt just high with that beauty of the deep blue waters. And maybe it's just a gorgeous sunrise or sunset that lifts your heart or jumping into cold water in a natural setting on a hot day. Anything that brings you happiness, like seeing your newborn child smile for the first time that can just light up a room, that is a glimmer or a shimmer. And when you finally healed from an injury and you have your first glorious pain-free day that feels magnificent, that would be a glimmer or a shimmer experience. And have you ever had a glimmer or a shimmer recently? I'd love to know. And another, we have so many transits. I feel like I could have made separate little videos for all these transits because there's so many, but another powerful transit we have affecting this super blue moon is Jupiter quintile Saturn happening on August 30th, the same day as the super moon at 11, 11 p.m. 11, 11. How often do you see 11, 11? I love to see 11, 11. So that's got a lot of meaning just because it's happening at 11, 11 and it's Jupiter quintile Saturn. Jupiter expands and Saturn restricts. And this quintile brings a kind of restrained expansion, a push-pull energy of really wanting to go forth in faith and hope. And there is this spirituality to transform our world, Jupiter, meeting with rules, regulations, restrictions, and some hard karmic lessons that is Saturn retrograde in Pisces. At three degrees, Saturn is nearly conjunct this super blue moon. And that brings a sense of seriousness to our emotions. It's so serious. <laughs> Whenever I have Saturn conjunct my moon in my chart, we all have this transit that comes around every year. Saturn and the moon will conjunct inevitably. And it always makes you feel like you could just drown in your seriousness of emotion. So take it easy. This too shall pass. I just want you to keep saying this too shall pass. Saturn quintile Jupiter, I imagine or envision you're just trying to build your dream house, right? And you want to expand and you want it to be bigger and better and brighter. And then you have to go to the permit center and that is Saturn. And Saturn says, you can't, you can't build up. You can't build a second floor that goes against this regulation. And you are going to have to redesign, reorg, reorganize what you were thinking according to our regulations. These are all retrograde words. We are in such a retrograde season. So find another way to expand. You're going to have to redo everything. 
So that's a little bit of a tough one. And Mercury, of course, goes retrograde on August 23rd, just before the supermoon, where it will cross Virgo between 8 and 16 degrees three times. That's what happens. You know, you're going straight, you cross a line, you go back, you cross the line, you go straight again, you cross the line three times. Three times a lady. Virgo loves perfection. And when Mercury is going back and forth, over Virgo. You're just trying to get it right. You didn't get it right. You didn't pass the test. You're going to have to redo it. You're going to try, try again to get it right, get it perfect. And the next two months are going to be a lot of redoing the thing. I would not sign contracts under this Virgo retrograde. And then Jupiter in Taurus goes retrograde on September 4th, affecting our resources, financial, money, pay attention to your bank account, make sure you're not getting hacked. And if you are a Taurus, Jupiter entering Taurus, this is your chance to ask Jupiter the king for everything you desire. And Jupiter, the king, will grant your wish this year, but maybe it's time for you, Taurus, to rethink what it is you really want and what is really going to make you happy. And you only get this chance to meet with the king and ask for your heart's desire once every 12 years. So make sure you know what it is you really, truly want. And what is your wish? Because it just might come true this year. And you don't want to be like one of those stories where you wish for something. And then the moral of the story is you shouldn't have wished for that. So get it right. This retrograde Jupiter in Taurus is a chance to rethink about what it is you really want to manifest before Jupiter goes direct again. And then you can ask the king for what you want. And remember, if you want to launch something, this time period of eight planets of retrograde is not the time to put it out there. Don't publish your book. Don't launch your new business. Don't put out your new album. This is just not the time because we have Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Chiron and Pluto all retrograde. And if you've seen, I've done retrograde, separate mini retrograde readings on most all of these planets by now. But this super blue moon really has us in a backward state of mind. So not a good time to try to accomplish much. <laughs> and now I want to get to that kite because this is the really, you know, piece de la resistance. This is the big deal of this chart. And you can see from the chart, I'm going to probably put the chart up here. So you can see that we have this grand trine. A grand trine is what it sounds like, a triangle, big old triangle between Mars, trine, Pluto, and Uranus. And this is in a kite formation. If you look at it, it just looks like a kite, right? on this super blue moon. This kite is a planetary aspect pattern that occurs when the planets in the chart form a grand trine and a fourth planet is opposite at 180 degrees, one of the grand trine planets, and that is Neptune. And that will form a sextile aspect of 60 degrees to the other configured planets. So this super moon trine Jupiter and Eris, I mean Jupiter and Uranus are also involved. And a kite formation is all about the hands of fate and destiny pushing you forward to discover your true talents and your true purpose in life. And there can be an initiation into something brand new under this super blue moon. But there can also be a challenging lesson. Sometimes kites can bring challenges here that forces you to step into your own power to express your true gifts and to show up as your most authentic self. I sometimes think kites can indicate a lawsuit. You know, sometimes lawsuits are about stepping into your power to stake your claim. Um, how will it affect you personally? 
Well, you'll want to look for these things in your astrology chart. Where is your Pluto at 28 degrees of Capricorn? Where, that's where Pluto will be transiting. There's your transformation. Your big faded destiny transformation is happening at 28 degrees of Capricorn. Where does Mars at two degrees in Libra show up for you? A lot of Libras are stepping into this eclipse season feeling so much change. So we're all going to be feeling change in our house of Libra. And there is your initiation and your ambition to make a change. Initiation and ambition. That is Mars, two degrees of Libra. Oh, I have Mars in Libra. I just realized I hadn't charted that yet, but oh, that's going to be affecting my Mars in Libra. <laughs> and where is Uranus and Jupiter in Taurus showing up for you? So I'm just going to walk you through as an example. I'm doing this right off the cuff. I'm thinking of my own chart, which I know all too well. And I'm going to say that Capricorn at 28 degrees of Pluto shows up in my house of the sixth house of health and routines. So something might be changing in my routine. And I do see some changes in my routine coming this fall. And then Mars at two degrees in Libra has to do with communication for me. That happens in my third house of communication. So I'm probably going to be communicating with a lot of people and related to my Jupiter and Uranus are happening in Taurus at the 10th house for me. And um, 10th house is all about your career, your social standing, your reputation. It can also bring up issues around your father. So that's what's going on for me with this kite. That's what I need to take a look at this super blue moon. Where is Pluto, Mars, Uranus and Jupiter happening for you. But let's not forget Neptune because Neptune in Pisces is here at the top of the kite, right? And Neptune in Pisces wants you to listen to your intuition. So there's a lot going on. A lot is happening, affecting our ambition, transformation, change, our money, our resources. But don't forget to listen to your higher self this super blue moon. That Neptune in Pisces is the top of the kite, really ruling the whole darn thing, telling you, you got to listen to spirit, listen to the universe, get guidance from source. Don't forget to tap in to your higher mind, your dreams, your vision. Take your kava kava tincture. And Neptune in Pisces, for me, that shows up in my relationships. So I might have some intuition around my relationships and my partnerships. And... Um, Perhaps some of you might just be again an Alice in Wonderland kind of adventure on this super blue moon. That's what uh, Neptune in Pisces always makes me think of Alice in Wonderland. And Neptune is also retrograde right now, causing that confusion, delusion, and dear God, stay away from drugs because that's not a good thing to do when Neptune in Pisces is retrograde. But I think of a lot of my friends right now who are just heading out to Burning Man. And let me know if you're going to Burning Man right now. And they are experiencing these powerful transit in that make-believe world that they're all co-creating. I think this will be an epic year to be at Burning Man. And what lessons will Saturn in Pisces combined with Neptune in Pisces, combined with a Pisces super blue moon. What lessons will the burners learn this year? It's going to be a powerful one indeed. So I think this will be a really mystical, magical time to be there. If you happen to be going there, you know, just stay away from the crazy. Like I said earlier, don't engage with crazy. Use your shield of compassion. The shield of compassion will get you through <laughs> And the last little bit I just want to say about this super blue moon, last but never least in my heart, is that Chiron retrograde, that Chiron in Aries, wounded warrior healer, affecting so many of us, born between 1969 to 1976. That Chiron is now squaring Saturn, diamond-making pressure, obstacles, struggles, conflicts, 
that have to do with our healing, the deep wounds that we've been working on for a while now, as Chiron has been in Aries for a while. And now we may see healing crisis on this super blue moon as the lessons and the challenges are like a tsunami. They're just overwhelming us now. And that is why I'm saying I am going to send you all distance Reiki in this. I'm going to pour so much Reiki. I'm going to put all my master Reiki symbols right into this video. Let me know if you're feeling it. And I'm going to do a whole lot of energy clearing too because y'all need it. <laughs> some singing bowl and just all the energy medicine I can pour into this because so many people I know have had health and emotional issues all year and this is about healing those deep wounds and it's funny I really wish I had my my cat is a I have a rescue feral cat that we uh, rescued who was homeless and I don't know his birthday and I don't have his astrology chart but I really wish I could do it because I swear this cat has some Chiron and Aries stuff he uh, has had so many health issues in this last year and he just had a puncture wound to his neck and it looked like it was healing so well I was like Florence Nightingale of cats over here just putting hot steaming towels. I should have dropped some pictures of him all wrapped up in a hot steamy towel. And I was doing silver cream and antibiotic cream and even anti-itch cream because he kept wanting to scratch it. And because it was on his neck, I couldn't cone him like you would normally cone a cat. And finally, after two weeks, the wound looked perfect. It had completely healed. Everything looked great. I thought, wow, I did it. I healed my cat. And then out of the blue, the next day, poof, it just swelled up and all this fluid and infection formed underneath. He had a secondary infection after the first infection. And I had to take him to the vet and the vet had to open it all up and pull all the fluid out. It's really disgusting. I can't believe I'm telling you this. But the moral of the story is even when a wound looks like it's healed, it can come back and just need healing again. And that's retrograde. That's Chiron retrograde, right? We heal and then we got to go back and heal again. We've got to do over, reorg, redo the healing. <sighs> and you can not ignore it. Something is coming up to be healed. Something needs to be released, whether it's emotional, physical, spiritual, mental. There is stuff that's going to come up that needs to be purified. And you simply cannot ignore it on this super blue moon in Pisces. And you have to deal with it right now. There's no more pushing it down or trying to stuff it into your subconscious, trying to, I'll just ignore the pain. I'll just take painkillers and drink something. No, the pain is coming to the surface to be felt, to be healed, to be dealt with now. And finally, release it on this super blue moon. Do not ignore your pain. Do not try to stuff your pain. And for sure, don't try to medicate your pain. On this super blue moon, it is time to heal your deepest wounds. That is what Chiron is saying. And my last thing, I just want to read the Sabian symbol for this Pisces super blue moon. It's so beautiful. It is Pisces, seven degrees, illuminated by a shaft of light. Ooh, that sounds like a glimmer or a shimmer. We're going to have a lot of glimmers and shimmers. A large cross lies on rocks surrounded by ocean sea mist and the keynote is the spiritual blessing which strengthens individuals who happen to stand uncompromisingly for their own truth and those who do not depend upon collective values traditions or support but seek at any cost to be true to their individual self and destiny almost inevitably will face some kind of crucifixion. They are sustained only by the power within them to which a light above answers. 
And this symbol tells us, be true to thine own self. And in the midst of the outer confusion displayed by those surrounding you, you will realize what you really are as an individual, a child of God. And this sudden realization that implies the supreme worth of life is guided by an inner voice and manifesting a high degree of self-assertion. This is the super blue moon to listen to the higher voice, the inner voice, connect to source, connect to spirit, connect to whatever you call it. Just connect to something higher, spiritually higher than you on this super blue moon. And it's so interesting that this is paired with that Taurus Sabian symbol we read about the gems being a certification of personal worth, and now we have supreme worth of life. This message, this super blue moon, is that we are all worthy of this precious life we have. And honestly, as I said, I'm just worried that some people may be drawn to suicide or be feeling swallowed up by these waves of serious emotion. So no matter where you are or what you're doing or what is happening for you right now, just remember your life has this infinite worth and there are still gifts to be found no matter where you are right now. You are all gems shining under this shimmering, glimmering super blue moon. And as Thich Nhat Hanh says, because you are alive, Everything is possible. Everything is possible for you. And wherever you are, whatever you're going through, you can always turn it around just like that. And you can find your true destiny, your gifts, your purpose on this super blue moon. You can begin again. It will get better when these planets start stationing direct this fall. You'll see things are going to get better. And I think of that song, ooh, child, things are gonna get easier. Ooh, child, things will get brighter. I might have to do a little short for that song because do not give up right now on this super blue moon. Even if you're hit with a tsunami, even if it seems like the worst thing that could happen happens, it is gonna get better. It is gonna get brighter and things are about to get easier coming this fall, I promise you. So stay true to your heart, connect to source to give you faith and guide you on this super blue moon. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.